and I will call to order for October 26, 2010, the joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. May we have the roll call for council, please? Council members, Draymond? Here. Friedman? Here. Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Aaron Najarian? Here. And for the Redevelopment Agency? Agency members, Draymond? Here. Najarian? Here. Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Chair Friedman? Here. May we have your report? The agenda for the October 26, 2010 joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, October 21, 2010 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. The item before you today uh, is the Director of Community Redevelopment and Housing and of Planning regarding Art and Entertainment District at 1A's agency motion providing direction to staff. Thank you. Mr. Starber? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'll go to uh, Alan Loomis, Principal Urban Designer with our Community Planning Department for the staff report. Alan? Thank you. Artie, can I get the slides configured up and running? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, the council and the agency. Uh, today's discussion is an elaboration on a discussion the agency and council started a number of months ago about the future of Maryland Avenue in the downtown. Um, at the, that time, a few months ago, the discussion began to talk about building an arts and entertainment district uh, identity for that portion of the street. And I just brought up a few slides to kind of recap a little bit of where that discussion left off. Uh, we had shown some images of other arts and entertainment districts in other cities, generally larger cities, uh, such as Chicago or West Hollywood. We talked about some of the uh, kinds of venues that these districts uh, tend to have. Uh, these districts are the center of their town's nightlife, kind of tourist trade, so they tend to have stage theaters or music clubs and galleries, that sort of, uh, uh, those sorts of venues. Uh, we had briefly talked about kind of how this would apply to Maryland Avenue with the thought that Maryland Avenue is, uh, has a sort of north anchor with the Alex Theater and a south anchor with the Central Library, Central Park, the ARC, uh, and potentially the Museum of Neon Art. Um, and this is kind of where we left the conversation uh, in this kind of vague sets of terms, uh, just sort of broad generalities. So today we wanted to talk a little bit more about how some of these ideas might apply specifically to Glendale and to Maryland Avenue. Um, so we've prepared a series of kind of rough, as I would say, back of napkin sketches. These are kind of rough sketches to kind of give a flavor to uh, what might happen. They're not intended to be sort of precise designs or renderings of actual projects, but just to kind of give a kind of feel for it. So this is an aerial view looking down uh, on Maryland Avenue. The reddish buildings down in the lower right, that's Central Park and the Central Library. Uh, you can see Brand Boulevard kind of running up the foreground. The Americana would be in just in the in the lower right, but it's sort of out of, not rendered in this image. And then you can see Maryland Avenue highlighted in yellow going up to uh, the Alex Theater at the very top left. So this is the area we're talking about. And again, the idea is that there's two, potentially two very strong anchors between the Alex and the Central Library, although neither right now actually is sort of configured to relate to Maryland. So some of the images that we want to talk about is talking, beginning with the north end, is how the Alex Theater could begin to connect to Maryland Avenue. Um, so right now the Alex Theater, is, as everyone's aware, has a beautiful forecourt, and it's uh, hopefully in the process of being made more beautiful as part of the, uh, Alex's renovation plans. But there's no relationship to, um, to Maryland Avenue and to, this, and to uh, Wilson on, and to the south. So one thought is that Lot 17 which is the current parking lot, could be reconfigured to include some sort of passageway or courtyard like you see on the right that would lead, connect the Alex Theater's courtyard down to the south. This courtyard could be used for a variety of kind of outdoor events, uh, including maybe outdoor film screenings associated with events at the Alex. It could be used as a VIP reception area for the Alex outdoor dining for some of the venues on um, Maryland today. So looking at how the image might look from Maryland, we could see it maybe transforming with some sort of iconic uh, object sort of at the north end of Maryland that would serve to sort of be a visual icon for people looking north on Maryland and be some sort of object that would also attract your attention from Brand Boulevard and complement uh, the Alex Theater. So this could be a sort of modern feature or uh, kind of 
or a traditional feature, something vertical that would catch your eye. I want to come back to looking at what the storefronts on Maryland could look like. Uh, we're showing um, these images show a variety of restaurants where even though they don't have outdoor dining, basically the windows fold away. That allows for uh, the outdoor dining, the dining in, inside the restaurant to be experienced by the sidewalk. And then another example of this is a very small art gallery in Soho in, in New York um, where you can see the entire wall sort of folds away and allows the gallery to be visible and open to the street uh, when they have openings. Um, the storefront is only about 15 feet deep. I'm looking at the south end towards the Central Library. Today, the Central Library, as you look south on Maryland, uh, you really don't see the Central Library at all. You actually sort of see the side of it, and the one entrance is a basement entrance to the uh, staff uh, areas. So we're envisioning that as part of the library's renovation, there would be a new north entrance coming out of the reading room, stepping out onto a set of broad stairs and a plaza facing Maryland Avenue, uh, and maybe some reconfiguration of the marketplace to garage to sort of really reinforce that connection that the marketplace garage and the library are linked. Uh, Redwood City up in the Bay Area has done a similar kind of renovation with their old courthouse um, and a very similar kind of situation. And you can see there's a kind of vibrant public plaza there. But finally, in between these two anchors, there's a number of uh, other kind of retailers and sort of facilities that sort of present other sorts of challenges. I'm going to focus on the Man Exchange uh, as being kind of two very large brick boxes and point out that large brick boxes with some modest renovations can actually be transformed into something pretty exciting. This is in Portland, Oregon. You can see this is a building, uh, kind of a banal uh, box, uh, recently transformed into a very upscale cinema environment because it's a very exciting kind of storefront now. Uh, six very small screens uh, with a very vibrant uh, bar and restaurant associated with this. It's very similar to uh, the Arclight or um, the Gold Class Cinema in Pasadena uh, shows a lot of kind of art house films, but kind of s sensitive transformation of the kind of old warehouse. And then one that's actually kind of almost exactly like some of the exchange structures is the Cosmopolitan Theater, uh, which is a kind of arts incubator in, in Sacramento. This is a 1950s uh, concrete Walgreens that's been transformed into, uh, as you can see, a kind of venue for stage theater. Uh, offices for nonprofits and uh, kind of uh, restaurant and bar area. So it's almost exactly like the exchange theaters, which with some very small uh, transformations could be uh, turned into opening out onto the street with, in a more kind of exciting fashion than we currently have today. So that's kind of the sort of image that we wanted to sort of sketch out, literally, uh, showing kind of some of the possibilities. We uh, have identified a number of possible sites that are opportunity sites. And at this point, uh, what we're looking for is direction from the agency and the council to move forward, uh, if you wish, on this concept. We've outlined in the staff report a number of follow-up next steps uh, in terms of building up kind of the uh, legislation to enable this to happen, uh, as well as some of the incentives that we could explore and come back to you with some of the more, um, all the details that would be necessary to move this forward. So with that, we're um, staff that's worked on this prepared to answer any questions. Okay, I do have several speakers. Why don't we go to the speakers and come back to uh, council and agency. Aram Kazazian, followed by Mike Mohill. Mike Mohill, you can come up then, and then Greg Estorian. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Nigerian Council members. Um, Mike Mohill, long-term resident. I uh, looked at this, what the staff has done, and I like it very much. Some of the ideas that came forward here months ago has been incorporated, and I like it. What I don't, what I do miss in their report is my suggestion of a card club. Nowhere in this report mentions a card club. Like it doesn't exist in entertainment. That's Las Vegas. Does it, does it exist? Ask Reno, does it exist? Ask Pachanga, does it exist? And the list goes on. They bring people to the city. That's the foot traffic you want, but we're not getting it here in this report. 
you'll get a mix of people coming to this card club. They'll be dressed up on the way to the theater. They'll stop off the card club and drop a few hundred dollars or even a thousand. And the city of Glendale will get that revenue, part of it at least. But nowhere in this report does they mention it. Is it a taboo subject? We can have liquor in Glendale. That's okay. We can have a boxing in Glendale. That's okay. But a car club in Glendale? <gasps> Did I say the wrong word? It's entertainment. And this is what the city wants. How many restaurants can the street fill up? How many... How many comedy clubs? How many Alex theaters? You got to have something that's different. And what I'm seeing with the staff has recommended is very good. Absolutely. But how about something that's different and exciting? People will bring their wallets with them. They'll take their children and drop them off at the playground over there at the Americana. Or at the library. But they will stay in the city, and spend money, and we'll get revenue, not overhead. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next speaker is Greg Astorian. Mr. Mayor, good afternoon. My name is Greg Astorian. Um, I'm a uh, real estate, uh, commercial real estate practitioner in the city of Glendale. I have been for a long time. Um, I, too, like what I saw, um, though I need some clarifications. And by the way, uh, what you're about to hear and the comments that I'm about to make, it uh, is not only from me. I represent the owners of... Uh, Man Theaters, uh, the, uh, the center, the Glendale Exchange. I also concurred with the owners of, or the representative of the owners of uh, Chewy's, uh, Mr. Stittick, as well as uh, Brand Boulevard LP. All, these three are private uh, uh, properties uh, in the corridor that we are discussing at this moment. I think, to be quite honest, it will serve us all well if from the inception, from the beginning, the owners of these properties are involved in the design, repositioning, retenanting, or the grand ideas that the city may have for that corridor. And here is why. These are all private property owners. They want to be part of the solution. And I think they can add a thing or two to the bottom line on finding, retenanting, and um, uh, repositioning the properties. By the way, I would be remiss if I do not mention Miss Sharon Garrett, I believe, and the position that was just created at the redevelopment agency. That's a wonderful thing to do. An advocate, I've always said that the agency's job should be an advocacy job for business. It helps a lot when you have a city uh, soliciting and calling um, great tenants that we want to have businesses to come to the city. And when that tenant hears it from a broker as well as from the city, it makes them feel very special. And I've uh, had the privilege of working with two of those. So my compliments as far as that is concerned. Uh, on uh, page two, uh, second paragraph, there is a mention of uh, coordinated retenanting and development strategy. Now, I don't know who you uh, mean by coordination to, uh, but I hope these are the owners. Again, I. I very much like for the ownership and their representatives to be involved from the inception of this process as opposed to being informed what the agency or the city has done and then to have their comments. Uh, to be quite honest, the objective should be to encourage the uses that the city wants to bring in. However, you should not discourage the existing uses and or any other retail use. In other words, if you want to incentivize galleries and so forth, that's wonderful. We think that will add value to the corridor. But do not disincentivize other uses. It should be an addition to, not a prohibition of other uses. In other words, we're not looking forward to a change of zone, is what I'm uh, getting at. Now, it's interesting that I am speaking for three different properties. And I don't know, what, was it three minutes or five minutes? Three minutes. 
Okay, uh, a subject matter of this uh, caliber and uh, stature sh needs a little bit more than three minutes. I would appreciate the indulgence of the chair. How many do you think you need? Well, I mean, that's the wrong question, but I, I think I can summarize in two or three, min two, two or three additional minutes. I can give you one minute. Uh, you know what? I'll thank you. I don't think I can make, uh, the, give justice to what I have to say for a minute, but I will continue on. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, I will be sending you the information. I have a question is for the speaker. If he, Mr. Mr. Historian. This may question. help. This may help anyway. Here's, I, your, here's your opening. I have a couple of questions. Um, give me again who the people are that you are representing here today. Denley Investments, the owners of the Glendale Exchange, about 90 some odd thousand square feet. Brand Woolward LP, 53,000 square feet. And I have spoken with the representatives of TNT um, Properties, Chewies. Are you actually representing these other people here yes. today? You've spoken with them or you're representing them? I represent them. I do not represent TNT. I've spoken with the representative of the TNT, okay. which represents the Chewies, that portion of the exchange. Okay. So the, the people you're actually here representing today are Glendale, the, Glendale, the, the owners in the Glendale Exchange and the uh, Brand Boulevard LLP? Correct. Okay. All right. And then the other question is, um, tell me about the other retailers in this portion of the exchange that, that um, you're talking about. Well, you have Tony Romas. You have, no, no, I uh, mean other, other than restaurant and gallery and um, theater. and. Cats in Lotus is one. Cats in the Lotus. Right. I, don't, I do not represent them, though. They're the no. part of the exchange. Is that it? Is that it? Well, the, there is the uh, bridal shop on the corner of uh, Wilson and uh, uh, Harvard and uh, Maryland. Harvard and Maryland. Right. And, of course, there was the, uh, um, the uh, eyeglass shop that went out of business that I'm representing or marketing the, uh, the space at the exchange, 127 North Maryland. Okay. Thank you. Isn't there a salon there, too? Beauty salon? And the beauty salon. And the tox shop. Now where, and the rest. where exactly is the beauty salon? One twenty. Uh, it's a uh, couple couple of shops north of Tony Romas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other cards. Item. Um, questions or comments from. Guys. There's no comments. Uh, I think the uh, request is for some direction. And uh, if there's no objection to the direction presented and the concepts presented by Mr. Loomis, uh, you're going to get our go-ahead then. Unless there is a second thought on comments. I, Mr. No, I have a couple of questions. questions. Yes. And Mr. Loomis, um, between... Along Maryland, between um, Wilson and Harvard, I guess, um, do we have just off the top of your head, or Mr. Hagani, or the department, the departments involved? Do we know how approximately how many rental units, rental spaces, store yeah. rentals there are? Defer to the redevelopment economic. No matter who staff owns them, whether they're city-owned, uh, I mean, agency-owned or, or privately owned. How many, how many rental? <laughs> I would love to repeat the question. <laughs> uh, um, I'm just, uh, oh, just, just along the Maryland from the area we're talking about, from Wilson down to Harvard. How many, how many units are there that are currently configured as rental units or what have you? Whether it's a, a Tony Roma's or a, the salon or the bridal shop or. Uh, Cat and the Lotus. Uh, so you're talking unit. about retail units, not residential units. N not residential right. units. Right. Just, just retail of one kind or another. Uh, I have no idea. From the stretch between Harvard to Wilson, yes. strictly on Maryland, there's approximately 30 storefronts. 30 storefronts. And does anybody know how many of those are currently vacant? Uh, we can tell you in a minute. Uh, exhibit C actually lists all the ten. Oh, this is the old report. You're right. Um, 
two E's for one. Three. Yeah. I think there's three. about five right three, now. Five. Looks like it's about three to five. It depends on whether you count linens and things as a storefront, since it's on the second floor of the marketplace, and it's also including Circuit City. What that three to Circuit. five includes the Circuit City site, right? The others are relatively small storefronts plus then chewies. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mann. That was those were my questions, Mr. Weaver. Just a suggestion. Sitting around here for more than a decade and listening to the exchange and what to do with the exchange come up time after time after time. I do hope staff will remember talking with the rest of staff that it's a narrow two lane road. Fire department requires them to be open. Secondly, we have two garages that empty out onto those one-lane roads. So when you talk about bringing future development in there, walking traffic, so on, you're going to have to navigate through cars coming and going out of these two garages and keeping the street open for traffic. This change is just was a poor design from day one. No council I've sat on yet has found a way to, to deal with it. But eventually, you're going to have probably going to do an environmental document or something. You're going to have fire's opinion. You're going to have police opinion, traffic's opinion. So you might as well deal with those things early on so you get don't get too far down the road. That's my only comment. Yeah. Freeman? Okay. Um, well, here's my comment and direction. Um, I hope to prove to Mr. Weaver that he is now sitting on the first council that is going to an agency that's going to have a, a hand in a, a successful go at, at uh, the exchange or this area we're talking about. I mean, we're, we're calling this the exchange, referring to it as the exchange. It's really more than more than that. If you're talking about Wilson all the way down to Harvard, but in any right. case, that section that we're looking at is a potential art and entertainment district. Um, uh, I would just. Uh, echo, if not the comment, but certainly the, the uh, sense behind the comment um, that we certainly engage the owners of, of the property that is not uh, owned by the agency of the city. Obvious, that is, I think, pretty obvious that that has to happen. Uh, and in, in bringing this concept forward, it has never been my thought or my vision that we would be uh, trying to take existing businesses and give them the boot. Uh, it is indeed, I think, an issue of trying to encourage um, or incentivize, I think was the word used, and that's a, as good a word as, as any, uh, to uh, incentivize the, the movement of businesses to this area. I think one of the reasons this is going to work is because of the scale, the, the very scale of this area. Um, it is small enough and controllable enough have this sort of thing, which is why uh, when we dealt with this the last time, the police uh, representatives, police department were here talking about that very aspect of it, whether or not this was of a scale, proportion, size, and uh, physical uh, layout, if you will, that that is controllable and workable. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to see this moving forward, and let's keep doing just that. Mr. Starbird. Along those lines, Mr. Mayor, and then keying off of both Mr. Draymond's and uh, Mr. Storian's comments, uh, we've spelled out the next steps, not among them, but what should be included among them is reaching out to the property owners and businesses in the area to build a consensus around uh, this vision, assuming it's going to be supported by, uh, by you all. I think that should be included as part of the next steps. Quintero. I support the uh, concept. I'm glad we're moving. Uh, forward and I do think we have to go in with open eyes it's going to be a difficult endeavor um, hopefully the property owners are going to be part of the solution they themselves obviously want to uh, increase their rents bring in the kind of vibrant uh, tenants that uh, will support their uh, properties so I think working together with the 
property owners and the staff, uh, I think we'll we'll do fine. It's it's really a uh, a very nice place in the evenings after we did the sort of lower keyed uh, lighting a few years ago. It's a great place to to walk around. A great place to have an entertainment arts type of uh, district. But uh, it's going to be a difficult endeavor, no doubt about it, with the type of economy that uh, that we're in. And I do think that whatever we bring in, in terms of private sector companies, I mean, they have to stand on their own two feet. We can go to a certain point to to have them occupy this space, but ultimately it has to be a private sector person, private sector company, along with the property owners that make the ultimate uh, decision as to what's going to work or, or not work. So. Anyway, it's exciting. I'm looking looking forward to it. I make it a point of driving through this uh, little area any time I'm, I'm near Brand just to kind of look to see what's going on, to see how many people are in the restaurants and and so forth. So they absolutely uh, are not doing this well, that well at this point, and really never did from the very beginning. It's just it's been a struggle. But it is more than just the exchange in that one particular block. We have to think of it as a as a neighborhood, so to speak, from the Alex down to uh, to the library. So I think the staff did a good job. Um, I just have a couple questions, um, actually comments. I think it's still very important that we focus on ease of permitting. If if Jack's restaurant, for say, or a, an establishment like Jack's wanted to move into the exchange area, what sort of different types of permits would they need? Um, and how difficult would it be to get those permits? Um, I think the potential is great for, uh, for invigorating that area. It's got its unique, um, certainly its unique character. Um, but I just hear horror stories. Uh, I heard from a, a small restaurant owner, uh, Philly's Best Cheesesteak, who for months and months was trying to, to get his permit, uh, his occupancy for a – he fronts a Broadway, if I'm not mistaken, right around the corner from the, uh, the Chinese restaurant, the Fortune Inn. Uh, and this gentleman basically put his life savings into that small restaurant, and it was one thing after another after another, delay after delay. And I don't want to point fingers at anyone or uh, assess blame, but uh, it was just an extremely long period of time for him. And it really is discouraging to someone who wants to, uh, a tenant, obviously he doesn't own the property, but who wants to bring some uh, diversity and some fun food. And in this case, it was a fun type of food to that area. Uh, we talk about Chewy's, and Chewy's was a great restaurant uh, at one point. Um, I think the decline of the the decline of that um, uh, exchange perhaps uh, was linked to the decline of Chewy's. Uh, I remember when people were in the middle of the day uh, lining up outside Chewy's to get in. Um, may have had something to do with their their lingerie. Uh, clad waitresses during certain days of the week. Um, but as Chewy's went, even when they put the kibosh to the lingerie show, I'm not sure what codes they were violating in that. I remember you writing a letter in protest. Um, <laughs> but at that point, Chewy's was a fun, a fun uh, establishment. And it was a lunchtime crowd. It was a, an evening crowd. And they had Music and it got a little rowdy. I mean, no doubt about it. There were all sorts of fights, if I remember correctly, that sort of spilled out over there. But I'm just concerned that we're making it more difficult to bring in that type of fun uh, establishment in the area. And I, I think that goes along with the idea of retenanting. And uh, I'm not sure how much of it is uh, architectural or structural or infrastructural, but uh, we should have an open mind and really try and facilitate the same way we, we gave direction to facilitating the establishment of uh, creative type of industries along the San Fernando corridor. One of our suggestions was have someone, a point man, a point
point woman, point person to uh, to facilitate the uh, bringing in and the uh, creation of uh, businesses that are viable and successful. We need the same thing here to cut through the red tape and get get these businesses going there. I think the potential is great for this area. Mr. Harani. Well, thank you very much for raising this, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> we, we asked Alan Loomis to keep the presentation light and uh, focus on the visual aspects. But in fact, um, w we are discussing several different methods at the same time to uh, with the owner's participation and the property owner's participation, we're creating a special district in this area where's, um, where we can um, come up with a special permitting system that will be largely ministerial with the pre-approval by the city council. Uh, to uh, And we're looking at the number of, for example, venues that may have um, entertainment that may include service of uh, alcoholic beverages. We're coming up with a parking and circulation scheme so that we have a, a series of principles that will op be opera uh, operational here and as long as the people participate in those we can ease and fast track the permitting process through a, an administrative system. We just wanted to keep the presentation light and not get into the details of the permitting, but in fact we do realize that the permit process is one that we need to make as quick as a, and uh, premeditated as possible so that the, every owner will not have to go through the same rigorous uh, process to repeat the same thing uh, along Maryland. And I do see that that is listed as one of your suggestions in item 7. So you have you have thought about that and recognized that as well. So. Yes, and we are working with Public Works regarding transportation and parking as well. So we are keeping a whole management system into, and we're creating a whole management system of this area to make that, uh, to connect that with the permit process so that we can do things mostly over the counter, hopefully through simple meetings. And Mr. Mayor, to your last point, um, Vet Vartani, Annette Vartanian um, will be that point person and she has been working with the planning department so she'll understand all of those fast track processes as business comes in. Um, you heard the name Sharon Garrett. Sharon also is working with that team in trying to identify appropriate viable businesses and in the case of Chewy's has worked with the property owner there uh, to bring a tenant. So all those things will be combined into the program. Treatment. Just one last thing, I, and I support this plan. I think it's very well thought out. Uh, I like that it activates Maryland, which can only help, regardless of what kind of district it's going to be, to get more people out walking around and give them more things to look at is always good for, for business. Um, one of the things I want to congratulate staff on is the proactive attitude that redevelopment and planning have been taking. Um, I think that the day when cities could sit around and wait for businesses to move in is kind of past, and we're in a very competitive environment not only financially, but also in terms of geography. And businesses, when they're looking to locate, have a lot of choices. They can go to Burbank, they can go to Los Angeles, they can go to Pasadena, or they can come to Glendale. And it's been my philosophy for a while, and I know that it's the philosophy of this council in terms of the redevelopment agency, that one of the best things that the agency can do in this environment is to be proactive and aggressive and to really be sort of the cheerleaders for Glendale business and for Glendale and to go out and not only help our existing businesses, but when we have vacancies, to go out and work with the property owner and to try to help recruit the best tenants. So um, it's something that Sharon and Redevelopment has been working on and had a lot of success. And I think that very soon we're going to see the results of that labor in terms of some exciting new businesses moving to Glendale and also in existing Glendale businesses getting a boost from the people that those new businesses will bring in. So I want to congratulate staff and I, and to thank Mr. Drayman for bringing this particular project forward, and I look forward to seeing it over the next couple of years blossom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is an agency motion, so I'm going to turn it over to Chair Friedman. Okay. Do you have a motion? Make the motion. Mr. Starberg, do you have a well, question? Can we just give direction? Let it go. Microphone, please. Let me try this. I indicated uh, here the hereby direct staff as follows. The agency supports the concept of the art and entertainment district as presented and directs staff to proceed with the quote unquote next steps as uh, indicated in the staff report 
but including reaching out to property owners and businesses to solicit their input and cooperation in the implementation. That's the motion. I'll second it. Or I'll make that motion. You can't make it. I'll a second it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call? Agency members Draymond? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Beaver? Aye. Chair Friedman? Yes. Move to adjourn for the agency. Second. And then move to recess. No? No. You're adjourning this. Okay. And motion. <laughs> Don't move. Thank you. Second. Need a motion for, for the council? council? So moved. Thank you. It was. Thank you. Seconded. We're adjourned.